Praise be to Allah, the one that's gathered us on the day of Jummah, the day of gathering. And praise be to Allah, who has allowed us to worship Him in this place of worship. And praise be to Allah, the one who allowed us to recognize that we should be in this place of worship at this time. And we start, we start with the praise of Allah, and we ask for, we, and we start with the praise of Allah, and we start with Bismillah, in the name of Allah, Ar Rahman Ar Rahim, the most merciful, the most beneficent. And we especially ask for mercy today because I ask forgiveness from Allah today because I'm speaking in front of my elders, and usually I'm used to uh, many more of the younger folk here, and so. I, inshallah, I ask Allah for forgiveness that uh, that I speak um, in front of those who have more knowledge and are, and are elder than me. But today, I just wanted to speak on one of the, one of the surahs of the Quran that we we often don't think about and we often recite in our prayer to to get the prayer over with. And that's a, that that's known as Sultan Kothar. And Sultan Kothar is a Meccan surah revealed to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. It's three small ayat, everyone knows it. And it was revealed to the Prophet ﷺ as a comfort. When one, one, of the, one, of the, one of the members of Quraysh saw the Prophet ﷺ walking into the masjid, and he stopped him to talk to him. And the Prophet ﷺ was walking out of the masjid when, when he was stopped. And, uh, and he had some conversation, and then they asked that man, Al-As ibn Wa'in, Al-As ibn Wa'in as sahmi the, of, of the Quraysh asked him, who are you talking to? And he said, I was talking to al abtal the cut-off one, the one who has no male progeny who will remember his name after he passes, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And now we know that we still remember the name of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to this day. And in response to what he said, that he told the Prophet sallallahu I hate you and no one will remember you after you're gone and nobody, nobody will accept your message after you're gone. That this is what he said to the beloved Habib sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What what did Allah what did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala respond with? Inna a'tayna kal kawtham. Indeed, we have given you on kawtham. And what is this kawtham? Kawtham is a river in Jannah, whiter than milk, and sweeter than honey, and smoother than butter, and the vessels, the vessels and houses of emeralds and the banks of that river are golden. That this is what the Prophet has promised in Jannah. But it's also, it comes from the root kathar of a plentitude. And Ibn Abbas, عنه, one of the senior mufassirin of, of, our, of our tradition, he said that al kawtham is plentitude, and plentitude, plentitude of goodness. That the Prophet ﷺ has been given goodness. And when, when the Prophet ﷺ <coughs> is being spoken to in the Quran by extension, we are also being spoken to. So that we are given a plentitude of goodness. And one of the greatest plentitudes of goodness and the greatest manifestations of this goodness is the Prophet ﷺ himself. That we are given the opportunity to be of his ummah, to follow him. 
and to take and to, to we, we ask that on the day of judgment we drink from his hand. And inshallah, we, we appreciate that plenty that, that that Allah has given us through him. And that because of that plentitude, we are commanded that because you are given that plentitude, pray to your pray to your Lord, remember your Lord, one hal, and sacrifice for your Lord alone. And the sacrifice that we make, the sacrifice that we make, living in this country where people don't really people really don't know who we are. People look at us as kind of strange. People look at us as you know, like who are these guys? Um, why are they putting their feet in the sink to, during lunchtime for prayer? Like, why are they so weird, right? That's that's what we look. That's that's how people look at us sometimes, and people don't really want to accept what we have, and people look at look at us strangely. But there's a comfort in what in what the greatest manifestation of Kilfa, the Prophet ﷺ said. He said that fatuba in you know, good glad tidings to the to the strangers, to the weirdos, and so we sh we should be happy. We should be happy that pop that that we are looked at as something strange, because it's just it's just it's just a manifestation and a, and the fulfillment of that prophecy that the Prophet said that Islam started something strange, it'll end as something strange, and so glad tidings to the strangers, and we should be happy that we're the strangers, and we should be happy that there's something that distinguishes us, and we should be happy that Allah gave us ankotha and Allah gave us a plenitude of goodness that He gave us this deen to follow. And that we should be happy that we we have the blessings of making sacrifices for for this for this deen. <coughs> and then what is the next ayah? In nashani al-amtal. That indeed the one who hates you, speaking about al as ibn Wa'im, but by extension those people who don't who don't who look, who look at us strange and and people who people who disregard us because because we just don't fit in sometimes. That those are the people who are really cut off. That those are the people who's mentioned, well, when it really matters, they won't be mentioned. On the Day of Judgment, they'll be forgotten. That, that the Prophet and, and us will be mentioned. That on that day, we will be the ones that are remembered and honored. That on that day, there will be a manifestation. And even now, there's a manifestation of, the, of what Allah told the Prophet as a comfort. That your mention, we have elevated it. That that he was told by Al Asr al Wahim a Sahmi that that you'll be forgotten once you're gone. But who's who's the most praised and the most mentioned human being in history? Think about it. Who has millions of lines of poetry written about him? Who has who's remembered in every single prayer? Who, who do we say Assalamu alayka to every single prayer? Who do we who do we mention every single day? Throughout the day, and in our shahada, that our Islam is not complete without him. Who is it? It's the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. That he is the one. That he is the one that uh, is mentioned, and he was told that he'll be forgotten. Allah will never let his habib be forgotten, and it is and it is a blessing for us to be able to make salawat on him, to be saying Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ali Sayyidina Muhammad wa barik wa sallim wa salli alayhi. That we have this blessing of being able to remember him, and we have this blessing to be able to, we have this blessing to be able to remember one of these manifestations of Kotha, this manifestation of of uh, of the, the rahmah that Allah sent to us. That this is a month, the month Rabi'ah Awal, Rabi'ah Awal. This uh, it was the Prophet was born in spring, and in spring new new things come, new things come, new new uh, how do you say? Blessings come and things sprout, and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is gift. That he is, he is, he is the gift, he is the gift to this ummah, and we should remember that during this, this especially during this month, all, at all times, every single day we should remember that, and we should be grateful for that. And then we should remember that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam sent was sent for us to remember Allah, and that He is the door which we go through to remember Allah. And that if it wasn't for him, we wouldn't have the opportunity to be gathered here today. We wouldn't be gathered here today with all the all the you look around you, there's all types of diverse people, different types of people gathered. Why else would we be here gathered with each other other than other than the remembrance for, for Allah? The Prophet allowed us the, the Allah allowed us through the Prophet to be gathered here and to know each other and to love each other and to, to have mawadda and rahmah in between each other and to have respect for each other. That this is this is what we were given, this is what we were given as a comfort for for the trials that the Prophet went through. 
that when somebody told him that you'll be forgotten, 1400 years later, we're still remembering the Prophet and, and, and Allah. We're still remembering the message that he was sent with. And we are still remembering what, uh, we're still remembering uh, what was really important. That, sure, maybe in this dunya, maybe in this dunya there will come a time that, sure, maybe Islam will, Islam will, won't really be something that, uh, that's attractive to people. But what does it matter? It doesn't, have, it doesn't need to be attractive to people, it needs to be attractive to Allah. And we know this is the religion of Allah. This is the final religion of Allah, and this is the most attractive religion to Allah. And who cares if somebody isn't happy with you? Who cares if someone isn't happy with you? That you who cares if somebody thinks you're weird for putting your, seat, putting your feet in the sink at work? Or who cares that you're the weird kid at school because, you know, you, in, during your lunch break you're praying instead of uh, talking about whatever kind of things people waste their time with today in school? Who cares if that's the case? That Allah is the one who, who, who remember you. And Allah is the one who will honor you for that. And we know that Allah says in the Quran, وَمَنْ أَعْرَضَ عَنْ ذِكْرِ And whoever turns away from my remembrance, فَإِنَّ لَهُ مَعِيشَةً ضَنْكَ He'll have a miserable life. And the people who don't have Allah in their life, really, they may seem happy, but they don't, they don't have any comfort in their life. Then what do, what do they turn to after? What do they turn to when... Uh, when things go wrong, they don't really have anything to turn to. They don't have any hope. When Ashruhu Yom Al Qiyamati Aama, and then on that on that day they will be raised blind. And what do they say when they're raised blind? And why does it matter that they're raised blind? That the greatest pleasure pleasure in Jannah is the beatific vision of Allah. If you're raised raised blind on that day, you're, you're missing out. So you remember Allah if you don't turn away from Him. And you remember him in the times when it's difficult, he'll remember you. Oh, oh my Lord, why have you raised me blind when I used to be able to see? Why? Then what does Allah respond? That's how it is. That's simply how it is. That I sent you my signs, my very clear signs. That I sent you my Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam And I sent you reminders Day after day More than we needed We were sent reminders But we forgot them So then, like that, this is the day that I forget you That if you wanted to forget my message back then Then on the day where it really matters, you're forgotten by Allah That, that you're, you're the one that's not, that doesn't matter anymore That when you're raised up, maybe you had all the mention about you here, but if you didn't have the deen, you don't have the mention where it actually matters on the day of judgment, and you're forgotten on that day. That we don't, we, we're not looking to be mentioned here. We're looking to be mentioned over there, where it actually matters. Okay, that you can go And then, what is this? This is a punishment from Allah that you ra that you're raised blind if you forget His remembrance. Okay, that you can man asrafa wa lam yu'min bi ayati rabbi. That like that we recompense the people. Recompense the people who transgress in this world, who thought that it was okay to overstep the bounds that Allah gave us, overstep the bounds and, and consider them something insignificant. That if you thought it was insignificant, that the deen was insignificant, then uh, you've overstepped the bounds, and Allah will repay you for what you deserve. And what you deserve on that day is to be raised blind, and in fact that's a mercy, that He's not giving you worse. And the punishment of, of the of of the akhirah, of the hereafter, it's more ashaddu, it's more severe wa abqa, and it's more lasting. It's not severe and lasting. It's more severe and more lasting than you can imagine. So so we should be happy that we've been given this deen, and we should be happy that we are given a chance weekly to, to be gathered here. And if we really, if we really, if we really are trying daily to be gathered in the masjid and with with our brothers and sisters that Allah has provided us with, with company, good company, that that that, that, that we gather to, together for the remembrance of Allah, so that on that day when we're raised, we'll say, Allah, we remembered, we remembered the the, the, the very Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We remembered him and we remembered you through him, that he 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 brought the message to you. We remember the one that was that was told that he'll be cut off, and we'll remember the one. We'll remember the the, the one who uh, we'll remember the one who was um, cursed by by these people, the people who thought that they were 
significant. Who remembers al Asr al Mu'in today? Other than you look through the books of Tafsir that nobody reads. That's 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 where you'll find him. That's where you'll find him. You won't you won't find him mentioned in any good in any good manner. You'll find him there. But the Prophet Sallam that he thought that he was threatened with with uh, with being forgotten. That's not what happened. Allah Allah showed Allah showed that that his Habib and his message will never be forgotten. That his beloved brought brought this beautiful message to us. And this message will never be forgotten. Even even it may be this it may be the strangest thing to people, but there will still be people until the day of judgment who remember who remember Allah. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين واستغفر إنه هو الغفور الرحيم. بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه. If you came late, read the messages. Very simple. That Allah gave us this deen and it's something that we should be grateful for. And if you're, everyone knows this, if you're not grateful for the deen and you don't make sh shukr, what's the opposite of shukr? It's kufr. It's ingratitude. That the opposite, of, the opposite of Islam is kufr and the opposite of shukr is kufr. If you're in, if you're ingrate and you're not grateful for what you have, then you'll be forgotten and you won't and, and you'll be forgotten where it won't, when uh, when it really matters, where, where where it really matters to be remembered. And so. We ask Allah that He makes us people who are grateful for what we have. And we ask Allah to allow us to recognize that His Prophet Sallallahu is the one that, 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 that we should be praising and sending salam on. And we, should, we ask Allah that we recognize that, that His deen is the deen that we should be grateful for. And His deen is the one that we shouldn't make any compromise for. That when people look at us strange for wanting to pray during lunch break, or people, people look at us strange for... Uh, Whatever it is, you, you, for your beard or for you want to wear a kufi outside or you wear a hijab, whatever it is that makes makes you look strange and stand out in in a strange way to people, we ask Allah that we were grateful for for the opportunity to look strange in front of people because Allah gave us Allah Allah gave us through His Prophet good news that if you're if you're strange, this is a good sign. You know, glad tidings, glad tidings to the uh, to the strangers, to the weirdos. And so we ask with that, with that we, ask, we ask Allah that He makes us firm on the deen. And we ask Allah that He allows us to appreciate what He's given us. And we ask Allah that we constantly remember Him. And we constantly constantly allow ourselves to manifest what Afa'na like a dhikra through His through the salawat and the salam of the Prophet. That Allah says in the Quran, Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ali Sayyidina Muhammad wa barik wa barik wa sallim wa salli alayhi Allahumma salli ala ali Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad wa barik wa sallim wa salli alayhi Allahumma salli ala ummati Muhammad wa ala 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 wa barik ala ummati Muhammad wa barik wa sallim wa salli alayhi And we ask Allah that He allows us to recognize that we won't find peace with anything other than this deen. And that if we don't return to Allah, we'll never find peace ever. And with that, we ask, we say, Allahumma anta salam wa minka salam tabarakta ya thal jalali wal ikram hayyina wa adkhilna dar salam inna Allah ya'mur bil adli wal ihsani wa ita'i dhil qurba wa yanha'i al fahshai wal munkari wal dhadhi ya'idhukum la'annakum tadakkarun wa yudhkuru Allah ya'idhkurukum wa du'uhu yastajib lakum wa la dhikru Allah ya'kbaru wa Allah ya'amu ma tasna'un wa aqim salam